In this video, we will solve the following example problem calculating the forces and members within a think truss which is connected to a wall, and we will also determine whether each of these members is under tension or compression. This is Learn Civil Engineering, where we combine theory with example problems to make engineering concepts easy to understand. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our content and excel your engineering knowledge. In a previous video, we covered the theory for the method of sections in detail and we saw that the general steps to the method include starting by calculating the reactions at the supports, then making a cut through the members you wish to solve and treating each side of the structure as its own static truss, solving one of the trusses by taking the sum of forces to equal zero, and finally taking the moment relative to a node with more than one unknown members. With that summary, we will begin to solve the first example problem. We have a think truss which is pinned to a wall at node F and supported by a roller at node C. There is an external vertical force of 80 kN acting downwards at node A and an external vertical force of 60 kN acting downwards at node B. The horizontal members are 4 meters in length and the vertical members are 5 meters in length. Using the method of sections, we must calculate the forces in members BC, BE and DE and determine whether each of them is being subject to tension or compression. You're welcome to pause the video here to attempt this question for yourself. So now, let's begin. Usually, we would calculate the reaction forces at the supports. However, for this example problem, this will not be necessary due to the location of the cut. We must cut the truss through the members we are interested in solving, which for us is BC, BE and DE. So our cut will follow this line and we will call the cut AA. Cut AA divides the truss into two separate structures, which we will now treat as two independent trusses. Notice here that we have divided the original truss such that both reaction forces are on the right-hand truss. From now on, we will only consider the left-hand truss, so we can disregard the right-hand truss and therefore we no longer need to consider the reaction forces at the supports. Considering the truss to the left of cut AA, we will draw on the internal forces, replacing the disregarded parts of the members like so. Note here that we are assuming the centres of the internal forces to be tensile, as they are originating from the centres of the bars and in the directions towards the end of the bars. We must still think of this structure as a single standing structure, where the conditions of equilibrium still apply, and so the sum of all horizontal forces, the sum of all vertical forces, and the sum of all moments must still be equal to zero. The internal forces in the cut bars, BC, BE and DE, stabilise the external forces being applied to the structure. We will focus on force FBE to begin with, as it is the only unknown force with a vertical component. In order to resolve the vertical forces applied to this truss, we must determine the vertical component of force FBE. For this, we will need to find the length of member BE, and using Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate that the length of BE is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared, which equals the square root of 29 metres. Now we'll draw a diagram which will assist us in determining the vertical component of FBE. We have FBE, which is throughout member BE, and we just calculated the length of member BE to be the square root of 29 metres. And we have FBEV, which is the vertical component of FBE and is over the length of 5 metres. We will denote the angle between FBE and the horizontal plane to be theta, which means FBEV is the opposite side and FBE is the hypotenuse. Using trigonometry, we know that FBEV is equal to FBE times sine theta, where sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which equals 5 over root 29. Therefore, FBEV is equal to 5 over root 29 times FBE. Now that we have determined the vertical components of FBE, we can apply the conditions for equilibrium by taking the sum of all vertical forces to equal zero, allowing us to find FBE. Taking the y coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all vertical forces is equal to 5 over root 29 FBE minus 80 minus 60, which equals zero. Rearranging for FBE, we get FBE equals root 29 over 5 times by 80 plus 60, which equals 150.78 kilonewtons. 
For member BE, as we assume the internal force to be tensile, and our value for FBE is positive, the force of 150.78 kN in member BE is tensile. The next force we will determine is FDE, and to do so, we will take the moments around node B, as this will eliminate FBC from our equation. The sum of all moments around node B is equal to 80 times 4 minus FDE times 5, which equals 0. Rearranging for FDE, we get FDE is equal to 80 times 4 divided by 5, which equals 64 kilonewtons. Again, as we assumed the internal force to be tensile within member DE, as our value for FDE is positive, the force of 64 kilonewtons in member DE is tensile. Finally, we will determine the force FBC. As FBC is the only unknown, we could either resolve the horizontal forces or take the moments around node D. And for this case, we will resolve the horizontal forces for the truss. In order to resolve the horizontal forces, we must determine the horizontal component of force FBE. We have already calculated the length of member BE to be the square root of 29 metres, so we can begin by drawing our diagram. We have FBE, which is throughout member BE, which has a length of root 29 metres. And we have FBEH, which is the horizontal component of FBE and is over the length of 2 metres. We will denote the angle between FBE and the vertical plane to be alpha, which means FBEH is the opposite side and FBE is the hypotenuse. Using trigonometry, we know that FBEH is equal to FBE times sine alpha, where sine alpha is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which equals 2 over root 29. Therefore, FBEH is equal to 2 over root 29 times FBE. Now that we have determined the horizontal component of FBE, we can apply the conditions for equilibrium by taking the sum of all horizontal forces to equal zero, allowing us to find FBC. Taking the x-coordinate direction to be positive, the sum of all horizontal forces is equal to FDE plus 2 over root 29 times FBE plus FBC, which equals zero. We have already calculated the values of FDE and FBE, so we can substitute those in giving us 64 plus 2 over root 29 times 150.78 plus FBC equals 0. Carrying out the addition and the multiplication, this gives 120 plus FBC equals 0. So we can clearly see that FBC is equal to negative 120 kilonewtons. For member BC, as we assumed the internal force to be tensile and our value for FBC is negative, the force of 120 kilonewtons in member BC is compressive. So, going back to our original diagram, we can conclude that the force in member BC is 120 kilonewtons and is applying compression to the member. The force in member BE is 150.78 kilonewtons and is applying tension to the member, and the force in member DE is 64 kilonewtons and is also applying tension to the member. If you did attempt that question yourself and got the correct answers, well done. In the next video, we will be using the method of sections to solve the forces within this more challenging HAL truss. So, to get notified when that video is released, and for more content like this, subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.